was the best pigeon fancier of all time? A question often asked. The most consistent answer for many would be Dr. Bricot. Without doubt, he was the greatest master in the period between 1919 and 1939. Between the two wars, he won an incredible number of prizes in the national and long-distance events. In 10 years, during the period from 1930 through 1939, he won 14 first prizes, 12 seconds, and 124 prizes within the first 20 places of top-level races. His successes were so numerous and so outstanding that there had even been allegations that he must have been doping his pigeons. Arthur Bricot was interested in pigeons during his university studies, while attending medical school, and 50 years later, it was clear that his passion for the sport had not diminished. To defend the position of being considered the top fancier and racer over a period of 25 years is nothing short of astounding. He was a student of genetics and performances, with an innate ability to get the combinations perfect, resulting in winner after winner, breeder after breeder. His first pigeons were the Beekmans and the Selliers's Lorettes. These were added to pigeons he later found, called the Backleans from Walcourt and the Rousseaus from Jemap. He also exchanged some young birds with the great French champion, Paul Chown of Tourcois, and the crossings which resulted gave him fantastic results. Although an inbreeder of pigeons, Dr. Bricot confessed that sometimes he used an outcross as too much successive inbreeding leads to a decline in the performances. The doctor maintained that those who did not seek an outcross at some point would watch their colony decay. Ideally, an outcross to another inbred family was his preferred solution to this problem, and the progeny should be hard tested thereafter before completely integrating the two families further. Arthur Bricou became an established name and that served him well, because none other than the brothers Bacleen van Walcourt were interested in exchanging pigeons with the doctor. That's how it was then and that's how it goes now. Champions are looking for champions to breed together and or to exchange pigeons, and usually with a sharing of the progeny. Bacleen chose two hens in Jollimont and the doctor selected two red cocks in Walcourt. One of them, a red one, was a grandson of the famous Bron of Bacleen. The other, also a red one, was a grandson of their views paler pure Weger who was first national Saint Vincent. Bricou was not really fond of large pigeons. That was actually one of his biggest problems, that neither the Carlius nor the Beekmans, who were nevertheless better muscled, match his standard. But Bricou had enough faith in his own breeding art to dissolve these traits. A first attempt to do so, he himself says in the foreword to his sale in 1963, was the purchase of a small grey cock at the public sale of the Rousseau Broters. He called him Le Petit Mouhi. The idea of making its baselines rounder and more compact, failed miserably. After a few generations, the model of the Petit Mouhi was almost completely overgrown by the Antwerp type of the Grutus, Red Beekman, and Laurette's, Red Carlia. Only the grey colour remained in the trunk. That grey will also leave traces in numerous long-distance pigeons and it was via a grey bricou that introduced the colour to the Delbar strain. As already mentioned, bricou succeeded in positively influencing the type of his pigeons with the Wegedoffer from Omnoses. He would then do the same and with great success with Bacleen's Weggies. He paired a daughter of the Rouge Beekman with a red Bacleen, namely the grandson of the Views Pale. Bricou was delighted with his experiment. In his own words, he bred the most beautiful pearls of pigeons that you can dream of from this couple. Good, perfect athletes and beautiful. Their names are on record for eternity, La Borna Loeil Blanc, La Janet, La Crevate, La Petite Rouse. The latter not only won fifth national Dax, but she also bred a plethora of champions, including Jules Cesar. Bricot only brought in inbred pigeons. Why? For the sake of stability in his family, if the imported pigeon caught with his own family, he could then replicate or repeat that breeding with more consistent results. An important contribution of new blood came in Jolimont from an exchange with the French champion Paul Sian from Tourcois. Sian was primarily a buyer of pigeons and only bought from the best. From what Bricou obtained at Sian, only the Akale Sian, a son of the Adelon of Sian, was found to be worthy of breeding. The Adelon was a pure wedge of origin. Bricou paired him with La Belle Rouse, a full sister of Jules César, daughter of the only real stock couple that Bricou ever owned. 
From the Akale Zion with the Mui Ross came the best pigeons, such as the Brun, the Rouge Liborn, sometimes called Loy Gris, Grey Eye, and the Liborn, which was a world-class hit pigeon. Bricou never raced young birds, and only began racing the birds as yearlings usually on the natural method before putting them on the widowhood system as two-year-olds. Dr. Bricou was one of the very early adopters of the widowhood method of racing pigeons, and this probably propelled him forward in his performances over many of the other fanciers who were still racing natural at the time. These two-year-old birds would be sent to races at 600 kilometers, whilst the older, more experienced birds would be sent to the longest international races, at 1,000 kilometers or more. His own preference was for the longest of the races, preferring to use the shorter races to bring his birds into form and condition. Dr. Bricou had a preference for birds with very strong vent bones, carried on a well-built and muscular frame with soft feathering all over. With regards to feathering and wings, he preferred birds with long secondary feathers on the inside wing, proclaiming that birds with short inside wing feathers were neither suitable for long or even medium length races. The overriding thought was that the beauty or absence of it in a bird told nothing about its athletic abilities, and that the basket was the best judge of all. Dr. Bricou sold quite a few pigeons. In 1930 he even sold a whole series of his champions together with a lot of youngsters. It is whispered that he urgently needed money to pay off the debt of one of his children. But given his all-surpassing results, and as one can imagine, his pigeons were very sought after by the long-distance fans, men like Wunder ESPT and Hector de Smet were regular customers. But Bricou also had his regular purchases and outlofts, first and foremost Senator Ernest Duret of Ecorsines, who beat the doctor more than once with his own pigeons in the national races. Car Armin, Chatelet, also almost only had Bricou pigeons, at Nesta Tremery, Edinburgh, there was certainly half of the Bricou colony and we certainly do not forget champions such as Demeretz, Demel, Dan Have, Oscar Blaymont. In 1940 the Germans marched into Belgium, while the Allies systematically lost ground. Dr. Bricou fled with his family across the border and left his pigeon colony to a caretaker. Because the reputation of the Bricou pigeons was known all over Western Europe and carrier pigeons were considered a powerful weapon in wartime, the French army did not in any way want the pigeons of Dr. Bricot to fall into hostile hands. Instead of bringing the pigeons to safety, they were mercilessly killed on the spot by French soldiers. Undoubtedly the most insane act in the history of pigeon sport. The life's work of the doctor was quickly destroyed. Dr. Bricot never got over it. Luckily for Dr. Bricot, two great friends of his agreed to assist him in recreating his colony of pigeons, they were Nestor Tremery of Outenburg and Arthur Caramine of Chatelet. The best stock pigeons of Caramine and Tremery were blended in with the experience of Bricot, and an entire round of youngsters were brought over from Outenburg and Chatelet to Jalamont. The entire pigeon fancy at that time was assured that this was to be the start of a new, all-conquering colony. Alas, it was to be for only a short period of time, for with the colony barely rebuilt Dr. Bricka died, in the prime of his life, but with the firm hope that his life's work would be continued. In 1952, Dr. Bricka's son agreed to sell the entire Bricka colony as his business interests prevented him from carrying on the lifetime of work that his father had invested in the birds, on the eve of the total sale of the Bricot pigeons, it was a real pleasure for the pigeon journalist, Leon Petit, to give credit to Arthur Bricot Jr. for the remarkable way in which he had kept intact the legacy of his father. Through this common sense decision, the opportunity to procure some of these world famous pigeons was presented to those fanciers who were looking for some pure Bricot birds for the remarkable way he had kept his father's legacy intact. Through this common-sense decision, the opportunity to procure some of these world-famous pigeons was presented to those fanciers who were looking for some pure Bricot birds.